Sergeant, uh, will you begin your recordings? PC recording has started. Thank you. Cloud recording has started. Thank you. Sergeant Polite, you'll be beginning with your opening statement. Thank you. Good afternoon, and welcome to the remote hearing on the Committee on Parks and Recreation. Well, council members and staff, please turn on their video at this time. Thank you. To minimize disruptions, please place all cell phones and electronics to vibrate. You may send your testimony to testimony at council.nyc.gov. Once again, that's testimony at council.nyc.gov. Chair, we are ready to begin. Thank you for joining our virtual hearing today before the Council's Committee on Parks and Recreation. I would like to acknowledge my fellow council members who are present. Council Member Traeger, Gennaro, Moya, Bannon, Holden, Wiley, Jonai. Good afternoon, I'm Peter Ku. Chair of the City Council's Committee on Parks and Recreation. I would like to welcome you to our virtual hearing that will examine a bill intro number 1888 proposed by my colleague, Council Member Mark Traeger. This bill will essentially ban commercial or privately owned vehicles from operating on the city's boardwalks you will allow an exemption for certain types of city-owned vehicles needed for maintenance work and upkeep, as well as for emergency vehicles. Our city's beaches are precious natural resources and their boardwalks are the cornerstone for recreation and cultural activities that have long been associated with our beaches. We see how they are susceptible to all sorts of threats due to climate change, with Hurricane Sandy being the most recent large scale threat. But they are continu continuously faced with threats from erosion, severe weather, overuse, and maintenance issues. The unnecessary use of vehicles on boardwalks add to that threat. And numerous reports have indicated that large vehicles place undue stress on the boardwalks, specifically the older wooden structures located on Coney Island. Therefore, I'm eager to explore how intro 1888 will help protect our boardwalks, as well as what other steps we can take to ensure their long-term survival at our hearing this afternoon. I thank Council Member Traeger for introducing this bill, and I would like to invite him to offer any remarks on this legislation. Thank you and welcome. I would also like to recognize uh, Council member Ulrich uh, uh, and Brooks Powers who are present. Thank you. Council member Traeger, please begin. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chair, Chair Ku, for your leadership and for making this possible today and to your staff, to your team. Uh, thank you to the members of the Prox Committee. Um, I, so I am Council member Traeger and I do rep have the honor of representing the iconic and landmarked uh, Regalman uh, Boardwalk. Uh, Coney Island had just had its uh, beautiful reopening day on, on Friday, and that is a step towards uh, rebuilding for our whole city um, after, during this pandemic. And there is no New York comeback without a, new, without a Coney Island uh, comeback. Uh, as many of you remember, um, my office uh, with many of my colleagues, we fought tirelessly to ensure that the boardwalk in Coney Island was landmarked uh, as a way to honor it and to recognize its, its uh, meaningful, significant history in, in New York. Um, and the, the boardwalk continues to be uh, an, an important iconic symbol of our city and of our country. Uh, and it's just a vital 
connective tissue uh, that connects so many of our wonderful neighborhoods here in Southern Brooklyn. Uh, this is a place where our children, our seniors, our families gather to enjoy each other's company, and make, make, make millions of new memories. It's where New Yorkers and tourists alike leisurely stroll to relax and enjoy uh, beautiful ocean views. It's a place for our, our runners and, and our fitness folks uh, to, to enjoy uh, this beautiful public treasure. But I have to share with my colleagues and, and those watching, um, it, it has become very routine for, for my office and for myself to see reports of actual vehicles uh, driving on the boardwalk, sometimes parked on the boardwalk, uh, throughout the day, um, and many times we're not even sure if this is a an NYPD vehicle, if this is a just a private vehicle, or private. It's we have to find out from three, four different folks what car is up on the board. Um, and this is not the Belt Parkway. This is not an avenue or a street. This is a boardwalk for our pedestrians, for our folks, our seniors, our local families to enjoy safely without having to worry about a vehicle uh, hurting them. And the fact that the local council member and, and, and many of our community board folks cannot even get a quick response from folks about what, where did this vehicle come from is deeply concerning. Um, and, and, and the reports continue. And that's why we need to codify uh, this regulation and this rule to make this official and to really make this the law here in, in New York and to actually enforce enforce uh, the law. So my bill, as mentioned, uh, intro 1888, would prohibit all non-city motor, motor vehicles from being used on the boardwalks and require um, where feasible, and this is where uh, there's still, we have to hammer out language on this, uh, vehicle to, to reduce the, the usage of heavy vehicles on the board, even if it's for city use or emergency use. Now, emergency use, we completely understand. If there's someone that's in need of emergency help and services, we have to do everything possible to help people. And we, I think there's no disagreement on this. But even where there's uh, main, uh, maintenance work or routine maintenance work, I think the city needs to do more and take greater steps to reduce the reliance of heavy vehicles on the boardwalk. I know that the NYPD, for example, has the option of these gators where they're very lightweight, lower weight uh, types of vehicles, almost like golf carts, so to speak. And I am urging all of our agencies to make sure that no one places undue weight and burden. This is a, 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 an iconic historic structure. It is, again, not the Belt Parkway. It is a place where seniors, children, families, runners, Folks should safely travel along their boardwalk without having to worry about being hit by a car or, or to move out of the way. This, this is just not acceptable. And, and the number of complaints has significantly increased on this issue. And I, we definitely hear from our community board about this and, and from our local stakeholders. So in closing, um, I just, again, want to reiterate that we know that the boardwalk is a, is a beautiful public treasure. And it's important that pedestrians always feel safe and that it is maintained. And just to again point out that we have a one of the highest number of senior citizens that live uh, in, in our communities in Southern Brooklyn, which is a fact even DIFTA confirms. Um, seniors shouldn't have to worry about being hit on a, by a car on a boardwalk. Think about how ludicrous this sounds, but this is where we are. And I again, appreciate the committee's uh, energy and their time and their attention to this very important matter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council Member. And we are also joined by Council Member Van Bremer and Council Member Borelli. I will now turn it over to our moderator, Committee Council, Chris Satari, to go over some procedural items. Thank you, Chair Ku. I'm Chris Sartori, Senior Counsel to the Committee on Parks and Recreation, and I'll be moderating this hearing. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone that you'll be on mute until you are called on to testify, at which point you'll be unmuted by the host. During the hearing, I'll be calling on panelists to testify, so please listen for your name to be called, as I will periodically be announcing who the next panelists will be. We will first be hearing testimony from the administration, followed by testimony from members of the public. 
During the hearing, if council members would like to ask a question of the administration or of a specific panelist, please use the Zoom raise hand function and I will call on you in order. We will be limiting council member questions to five minutes, which includes the time it takes to answer those questions. For members of the public, we will be limiting speaking time to three minutes in order to accommodate all who wish to speak today. Once you're called on to testify, please begin by stating your name and the organization you represent, if any. We will now call on representatives of the administration to testify. Appearing today for the Department of Parks and Recreation will be Mark Fote, Deputy Commissioner for Maintenance, Edwin Rodriguez, Assistant Commissioner for the Parks Enforcement Patrol, and Matt Jury, Director of Government Relations. At this time, I'll administer the affirmation to each representative of the Parks Department. I will call on you uh, each individually for response. So at this time, please raise your right hands. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth before this committee and to respond honestly to council member questions? Deputy Commissioner Folkt? I do. Thank you. Assistant Commissioner Rodriguez? I do. Thank you. Mr. Drury? I do. Thank you. At this time, I'll invite Deputy Commissioner Folk to present his testimony. Thank you. Thank you, and good afternoon, Chair Ku, members of the Parks Committee, and other council members. My name is Mark Folk. I serve as Deputy Commissioner and Chief Operating Officer of New York City Parks. Joining me today are Edwin Rodriguez, our Assistant Commissioner for Urban Park Service, and Matt Drury, our Director of Government government relations. We're happy to be here with you today to discuss intro 1888, which seeks to prohibit unauthorized vehicles on boardwalks adjacent to city beaches under the agency's jurisdiction and to limit the weight and size of authorized vehicles accessing our boardwalks. We support and appreciate the intent of the legislation that has been introduced and look forward to working with council regarding the drafting details. There are nine city beaches throughout four of our five boroughs, and three of these beaches feature adjacent wooden boardwalks. The boardwalk at South Beach in Staten Island currently consists of wood, but is slated to be reconstructed in concrete as part of the federal South Shore of Staten Island Coastal Storm Risk Management Project led by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Brighton Beach and Coney Island Beach are served by the iconic Coney Island Boardwalk which famously features hardwood planks along many stretches, though recently renovated sections have utilized other resilient materials and incorporated concrete carriage lanes into the topside design to accommodate use of strollers and wheelchair as, as well as official vehicle access when necessary. Unauthorized vehicles on park property are a serious safety concern, especially on our beach boardwalks. At Coney Island and our other beaches open, we wanna make sure the boardwalks are safe and accessible for local residents and beach visitors to use. Unauthorized vehicles are currently prohibited via agency rules and signage to this effect is posted along our boardwalk entrances. Our parks enforcement patrol officers work closely with NYPD to address unauthorized vehicles and the agency is implementing significant measures to further address concerns at problematic locations. For example, led by, NY, led by NYPD's counterterrorism unit, the city has implemented interim structures to physically restrict vehicular access at Coney Island Boardwalk. The boardwalk is also part of NYPD's broader plan to install security bollards at key sites around the city to prevent unauthorized vehicular access. This project is in the early stages of procurement to identify a construction contractor, and we hope to see construction begin next year. Regarding authorized use, NYC Parks does its best to minimize the use of agency vehicles along our boardwalk. However, along our boardwalks. However, in order to keep Coney Island and the rest of our beaches safe and in good condition, as world-class amenities that they are, the agency does have, on occasion, strategically deploy efficient and effective support vehicles, as they can safely operate along our beaches when necessary. We use a wide variety of vehicles along our beach boardwalks, including many, many smaller utility vehicles, such as gators, utility carts, golf carts, ETVs. But for some larger operational issues, vehicles are required. For example, we may occasionally use vans to effectively transport maintenance staff, equipment, and supplies. 
We also use larger Broyhill trash loaders during off hours to more efficiently collect trash from the bins along the boardwalk. But these vehicles are equipped with wider balloon tires that distribute the vehicle's weight evenly. Similarly, though our Parks Enforcement Patrol officers use small utility vehicles like ATVs, there can be a need to use a small sedan to transport emergency staff during in-season emergencies or to facilitate off-season engagement with unhoused individuals during code blue cold weather emergencies. Similar NYPD and FDNY occasionally require vehicle use to our boardwalks and promenades in emergencies. Since DOT and their approved contractors repair lighting along our beach boardwalks, they also occasionally need to use bucket trucks or vans to make necessary repairs. In any case, public safety and the good condition of our assets remain top of mind in cases where larger vehicle access is absolutely necessary. Thank you for offering the opportunity for us to testify today and for our agency staff to view testimony from the public via the council hearing live stream. We would now be answered, happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I will turn it over to questions from Chair Ku. Panelists, please stay unmuted if possible during this question and answer period. Thank you. Chair Ku, you may begin when ready. Thank you, uh, Chris. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Folks uh, and Assistant Commissioner and Matt come here to testify. Commissioner Folks, uh, what is the current policy regarding the use of private vehicles operating parks department boardwalks? So currently parks rules prohibit unauthorized vehicles on our boardwalks. And that is posted on signage on all the beaches and boardwalks and promenades. So what is the current penalty for violating regulations on such uh, vehicles? And who handles the enforcement? The pet officers or the MIPD? The education and enforcement are handled by both NYPD and our PEP officers. I'll turn it over to Commissioner Rodriguez for more information on penalties and fees. Good afternoon and thank you for having me. I'm Edwin Rodriguez, Assistant Commissioner for the Park Enforcement Patrol. The penalty depends on whether we write a summons under the park rules and regulations or the New York State uh, vehicle traffic laws. So there's no specific amount of penalty, like, well, $100 ticket, $50 or? It, it ranges. The highest amount of um, penalty is 500 with a penalty, a default penalty of 750. That's the highest amount of summons we can issue. Do they get a ticket right away or do they give you a chance to, hey, you know, uh, move, move your car, you know? It all depends on the situation. Uh, we usually educate, but it, it depends on the situation. So uh, how many tickets, such tickets were issued like, uh, in a year? In the past uh, three years, we have issued two summonses and both of them were at Coney Island. And that's it? Just two summonses? That's all. Yes, only two summonses. But I'm sure there are more than two cars parked there during the last two years, right? Like illegally parked, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, we encounter very few unauthorized vehicles on the boardwalk. And when we do, we safely escort them off and educate them. Okay, yeah. So does parts keep track of damage to boardwalks that may have been the result of vehicular activity? Uh, Chairman Ku, we don't specifically, um, unless it's evident when a PEP officer or an NYPD officer uh, moves a vehicle along, if there's obvious damage resulted in that moment from that vehicle, um, it would be noted as such. But generally, we inspect the boardwalk year round. We obviously ramp up our repairs for the boardwalk right now in the spring in advance of the season. And it's very difficult to tell necessarily when you come upon 
a need for repair, like a broken board, what, what the reason for that uh, damage may have been. So, so you don't see any like uh, damages uh, resulting from vehicle vehicular traffic, or you don't document it, no. Um, and we don't document it anecdotally, as Commissioner Rodriguez mentioned. Um, we don't see a lot of private vehicles on the boardwalk, and we don't we have not observed direct damage to the boardwalk from those vehicles. There will be times when you will observe private, what appear to be private vehicles on the boardwalk, but they will be contractors working on behalf of either DOT to maintain the lights, um, particularly principally DOT maintaining the lights. Okay. So are there any current weight limitations placed on the type of vehicle that may operate on the boardwalk? Um, there are not any uh, weight limitations um, in regulation. In a pra as a practice, we um, limit the vehicles that we use on the boardwalk. As I mentioned, both our maintenance operations and our PEP operations use lightweight vehicles. Uh, we use gators, ATVs, golf carts, things like that, unless absolutely required. And when we do, we uh, minimize those occasions. But again, if we need to use a heavier vehicle, for example, to haul plumbing supplies to maintain or repair a leak in one of the bathrooms, comfort stations along the boardwalk, we have to do that. And again, DOT's private contractor needs to use a bucket truck in order to get up to maintain the street lighting. So we minimize the use of heavy vehicles, but to answer your question directly, there's no specific weight limit. Uh, so, uh, wooden bolt walls such as those located in Coney Island subject to more damage than concrete reinforced or constructed bolt walls. Uh, yes. So, so the, no, wooden will suffer more damage, right? Yes, the wooden, and, and as uh, Councilman Traeger noted, the historic nature of the wood on the Coney Island boardwalk, wooden boardwalks are more, by the nature that they're wood, are more susceptible to damage than our concrete boardwalks like the recently rebuilt Rockaways boardwalk. Thank you. How many wooden boardwalks are under parks jurisdiction as, oppo as opposed to new concrete reinforcements? So we have two boardwalks that are wood, um, South Beach and Staten Island, and then the Coney Island boardwalk, which gets a little confusing. Coney Island boardwalk covers two beaches, Brighton and Coney Island. So we have two boardwalks that are wood. We currently have one boardwalk, which is concrete, which is again, the aforementioned Rockaways. Are they in good conditions? Uh, the Rockaways boardwalk is brand new. It was just rebuilt after uh, Superstorm Sandy. Um, and is in excellent condition. Yes, the South Beach Boardwalk is wood. It is in fair condition. And again, as I mentioned in my opening comments, that boardwalk will be replaced um, in the coming years by an Army Corps funded project called the Line of Protection, which is a response to Sandy, Superstorm Sandy, which will create a wooden, excuse me, a concrete boardwalk at South Beach in Staten Island, very similar to the Rockaways concrete boardwalk. Thank you. So uh, I will turn over the questions um, by the bill sponsor, Council Member Traeger. And I also want to acknowledge the presence of Council Member Rivera. Yeah. So Council Member Traeger, can you begin your questions? Sure, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you, Deputy Commissioner. I also just wanna give a uh, public shout out to the, the Brooklyn Parks Commissioner, Marty Marr, who um, certainly hears from us Quite, quite a bit, um, but I will say incredibly responsive to us. And, uh, and you know, it was, again, it was a very nice reopening uh, this, this Friday. And quite frankly, I, I, I fully understand how Parks Department actually needs more resources and staff in order to uh, better maintain our public treasures. So I, I begin by saying that because I think it's important to get that on, on the record. Um, Deputy Commissioner, you, you had mentioned that um, uh, the chair just asked about the conditions and your views and the conditions of the boardwalks. Um, do you have data available uh, in front of you about the number of claims uh, against the city of New York in the past year, past two, three years, as a result of folks sustaining injuries because of the boardwalk? 
I don't have that information, no, but I'm sure we can gather and follow up with the chairman. Yeah, um, you know, one of our one of our former colleagues in the city council, uh, former land use chair David Greenfield, a couple of years back, uh, was uh, taking a stroll along the boardwalk, and he also got himself injured because of a, a board that was loose, missing, folks fall through. Um, and the complaints about the conditions of the boardwalk are only increasing, uh, not, not decreasing, but uh, certainly that, that data, we would appreciate that data, whatever data that you, you guys have. Um, how many full-time carpenters do you have working uh, to maintain the Coney Island boardwalk from Coney to Brighton Beach throughout the year? Well, um, we can get you the number. I don't know the current number of full-time carpenters we have in Brooklyn um, year round seasonally. So during our peak season, which would be the summer months, we dedicate two carpenters in the lead up. So starting in April around now through the season, we dedicate two carpenters to maintaining the boardwalk. Outside of the peak season, no carpenter is specifically dedicated to Coney Island, but we're doing repairs whenever they're necessary. But we will get you the numbers of full-time carpenters that are employed in our Brooklyn shops, because at any time, any one of them could be working on the boardwalk. And when you say from your Brooklyn shops, that means that they're responsible for spaces beyond Coney Island, Brighton Beach, is that correct? Yes, the way our operations work is we have uh, offices of skilled trade workers, skilled trades being plumbers, carpenters, electricians, et cetera, um, assigned per borough. So there are is a fully staffed trade shop in each borough. So there's a fully staffed uh, shop in Brooklyn that serves only the assets in Brooklyn that includes carpenters. So is it accurate to say that there is actually no full-time carpenter assigned to this boardwalk? Is that correct? Not year round. There is seasonally. There are two carpenters seasonally, which is again about now, mid-April through the summer, assigned to Coney. And they get moved around as, as you see fit? based upon need elsewhere? No, they're assigned to Coney. And, and how, how long is the, the boardwalk again? Um, I'm sorry, I don't know that. It's over two and a half miles. Uh, it, is, it is a, this is not your average boardwalk. This is a significant uh, boardwalk. Um, and uh, it is concerning to hear that we don't really have a full-time year round uh, uh, staff assigned to it because I understand that there's attention paid to the season, but folks live here beyond, beyond the season. It is a heavily visited boardwalk beyond the seasonal months. Matter of fact, uh, Commissioner, just so you know, Southern Brooklyn had no open streets as part of the open streets program. So people in the neighborhood turned to the boardwalk as their refuge, as their to get fresh air. It, this is our Central Park. This is our Prospect Park. Uh, this is our public treasure. Um, and so it, it just seems to me that uh, there's greater attention being paid to when visitors flock to the boardwalk than, than ordinary folks living here all year round. Um, and so as, we, as we're heading into this budget uh, negotiations and, and, and this year, um, can, can we have a commitment that there will be full-time year-round maintenance staff carpenters assigned to this now landmark structure? Well, we can discuss that with, um, with the mayor's office and others and OMB and others who we negotiate our budget around. Certainly understand your concerns. They're, they're well-reasoned and well-voiced. But I can't promise on as part of this hearing that we could assign carpenters year-round, uh, dedicated carpenters year-round to Coney Island. And, and Commissioner, I, you know, I've, I have visited uh, a couple of times, not as frequently, obviously, in my district, Coney Island Boardwalk. I visited a couple of times the beautiful High Line, uh, which is located in Manhattan. It's, it's quite, quite the structure. Have you been there yourself? I have been. Yes. Um, and one thing that strikes me right away is the number of staff that I see working along the High Line. And I noticed their parks department badges, whether they're PEP or whether they are um, parks employees. Um, are, 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 are those folks working there along the High Line seasonal or are they, are they hired uh, throughout the year as well? The staff that you see working on the High Line are not employees of NYC Parks. They're employees of the Friends of the High Line. You do see our PEP officers because the Friends of the High Line subcontract 
to PEP to provide security, but all of the maintenance staff you see that maintain the High Line are private employees of the Friends of the High Line. They are not City of New York, uh, uh, New York City Parks employees. And, and that leads me to my next question. Um, is it correct that the High Line has a conservancy? It has a Friends of the High Line. It's not a conservancy, correct. but but it's the basic private nonprofit partner organization, yes. To, con to protect the structure, to maintain the structure, uh, funded by a lot of folks who, who are wealthy, who live in the, in the area, is that correct? I do not know the source of their funding. Uh, so the difference here is that, you know, we uh, are not surrounded by, you know, the, the, the millionaire, billionaire skyscrapers, right? This is a neighborhood, this is a neighborhood, a working class neighborhood. Um, but it doesn't make us any less special or any less valuable. Um, and I think that as we've heard from the mayor time and time again, the issue of equity, um, we need to actually do more uh, to areas like Coney Island and Brighton Beach that deserve better maintenance. Because I will tell you, Deputy Commissioner, um, when I went there this past Friday for the, for the reopening, a lot of folks stopped me on the boardwalk to point out examples of missing boards, to point out examples of terrible, unsafe conditions. Uh, I also tell you, Deputy Commissioner, that I witnessed with my own two eyes uh, two large orange parks trucks that were driving on the boardwalk. They, these were not gators. These were not minor, small ATVs. Um, and it was not clear to me what exactly folks, folks were doing. But um, have you made a request to OMB or to the mayor's office to purchase additional uh, gators or ATVs or lower weight uh, uh, vehicles to put less pressure and strain on the boardwalk? Uh, we make requests every year to OMB to purchase gators, yes. Not only for Coney Island or, or Brooklyn, but throughout the agency. Um, How and many? In fact, I'm sorry, go ahead. Continue, please. I'm sorry. In fact, uh, Commissioner Rodriguez recently purchased a number of ATVs uh, for use on all of our beaches and boardwalks. So we're constantly requesting and seeking and reallocating our own uh, non-capital expense dollars to purchase those type of uh, lower impact, smaller vehicles. And, and how, how much does one cost? Um, it all depends. <laughs> uh, it all depends on the range of the features you get for a vehicle, but uh, a Gator can run somewhere between 20 and 35,000, depending on whether or not, you know, it's a heated cab or whether or not you get a snow plow to go with it, you know, depending on how many seasons you want to get out of the use of the vehicle, but a rough number between 20 and 35,000 for a- So in a city a with a budget over $90 billion, these, these can be purchased, is that correct? Oh, absolutely. To, to be clear, they are expense purchases because they're under the $50,000 threshold. They are not capital purchases like other vehicles. They are expense purchases. Right, uh, just to go back to the vehicles and I'll then turn back over to the chair. Uh, so if I heard you correct, uh, Deputy Commissioner, you had mentioned that you are supportive of the bill or, or the intent, is that correct? Correct, absolutely. Um, and I, if I heard you correct as well, if you can just clarify for the record uh, that there's a plan in place to install security bollards. Is that by all the entrances to the boardwalk? Can you speak, can you speak more about that and, and the time frame on that? Certainly. Uh, this is actually an NYPD counterterrorism led initiative. Um, and it is a uh, result of the very unfortunate incident back on the on Halloween of 2017, when there was an issue on the Hudson River Park, the Hudson River Greenway, uh, where a number of people were injured or killed by someone uh, wishing to do harm with a vehicle. So subsequent to that, NYPD counterterrorism identified several sites around the city, Coney Island Boardwalk being one to, in their terms, armor the edges, uh, which has been done in a temporary way at several entrances to the boardwalk by placing, you often see them the large concrete blocks that have NYPD stenciled on the side of them, but several entrances to the Coney Island, Coney Island boardwalk, those are already in place. But those are a temporary measure for a larger capital project that is funded and is currently in the early phases of procurement for construction, which will armor all entrances to the Coney Island boardwalk with crash resistant bollards and other features used in counterterrorism methods. So again, that's in the early phases of, of procurement for a contractor. So depending on how that process goes, it would be implemented sometime in 2022. Right, and also uh, just to the record, Deputy Commissioner, I, I had sent a letter uh, after the, the terror attack in Manhattan 
um, also requesting a, a look at the boardwalk because again, we got, we got complaints about the vehicles uh, th th there as well. Um, so I'm glad to hear about that you're supportive of the bill. I'm glad to hear that there's additional security measures being in place. I do have to just respectfully just ask further about if I heard correct, only within the past three years, only two parks department summonses were issued to unauthorized vehicles. Is that correct? Looks like Commissioner Rodriguez is trying to unmute himself. So uh, I'm yes, uh, only two summonses have been issued in the past three years. And uh, Deputy Commissioner, how many uh, full-time uh, PEP have been assigned to the boardwalk during the past three years? During off-peak hours, we have uh, two sergeants and four officers assigned to the Coney Island sector. Uh, during the season from April to September, uh, we have 31 seasonal employees and an additional four sergeants assigned to the Coney Island boardwalk and beach. Are, are seasonal employees authorized to issue summonses? Uh, no, they're not. Um, they're only seasonal employees. But we do add additional four sergeants, bringing it up to five sergeants, uh, four officers, and one full-time captain. So I think what we're kind of piecing together here is that there's just an, an inadequate enforcement structure um, in, in this area. And also, um, I, I just I have to respectfully argue and push back and to say I, I, I know we use the term seasonal and I definitely understand because it's, there's, cer there's certain amusement season and beach season but this is a neighborhood where people <coughs> call home all year round over 50,000 people live in Coney Island um, more live in Brighton but the area attracts visitors all year all year round and I think the city needs to stop treating this piece of area as a seasonal area. This is a, this is a full year neighborhood. Um, and this is gonna be a very big part, uh, Mr. Chair and others, uh, as part of our, of our budget fight uh, to get, to add more resources to maintain, you know, Central Park I'm sure gets year round services. Prospect Park gets year round services. This, this should not just be treated as just a couple of months of the year. And even within those couple of months, we still hear about the inadequate amount of, of, of enforcement or in terms of maintenance structures. I think the fact that we have no full-time carpenters and maintenance staff assigned to this iconic landmark structure year round is troubling. Uh, and so we, we have a lot more work to do, uh, but I will tell you Deputy Commissioner that I myself have had to report to the 60th precinct, the local precinct here in Southern Brooklyn about a vehicle that no one knew who was driving, what this was about, a vehicle that was parked um, and quite frankly, the burden should not fall on the local residents to figure out what, what, what a car is doing there. I think we need more clarity uh, about, about the rules and the laws and regulations. We need, more, we need more, more of an enforcement structure to make sure that people feel safe because um, uh, th this, is a, this is a chronic issue that we see coming up time and time again. But I, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna pause here in the interest of time to allow my colleagues to ask additional questions to hear from the public as well. And again, thank the chair for his time. Thank you, Council Member Traeger. We'll now turn it back to Chair Ku, who has additional questions. Are there any other members who want to ask questions? Uh, Raise hands. Not currently, Chair Ku. Um, I would just ask if any other members who are present would like to ask questions, please use the Zoom raise hand function. Oh, I see, see Council it. Member yeah. Brooke Powers has raised her hand. Time starts ahead, now. Yeah. Please begin, Council Member. Um, I wanted to first say thank you for the presentation. Thank you, um, Council Member Traeger, for also your remarks. Um, as someone who serves a coastal community that has um, a boardwalk also, um, I did want to speak up after having conversations in the community, especially with our community board. Um, manager and chair in terms of concerns about heavy utility vehicles on the boardwalk. So while we have um, a relatively new boardwalk um, that is uh, more sturdy than wood would be, it still deteriorates um, and shortens the life of the boardwalk overall with having such heavy utility um, vehicles traveling frequently on the boardwalk. So I think that is something to, to just flag um, from my perspective, considering that 
in my community, we do not have a wooden boardwalk, but it's still a concern for us as well. Thank you. Thank you, council member. And we'll turn it back to Chair Kuna. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, Deputy Commissioner, what are the types of vehicles that parks will regularly use to perform its maintenance and sanitation work on boardwalks? So uh, the vehicles that we regularly use on the boardwalk, as I mentioned before, are gators. Uh, and in the case of PEP, uh, uh, all-terrain vehicles, ATVs, we, we generally use gators. Um, then that's for regular maintenance, for picking up trash and things like that. Um, there are the times when, as I mentioned, there are larger repairs that require materials that can't be carried in a gator like plumbing supplies to repair the bathrooms. And then we'll take those out in either a small pickup truck or a van. Um, and then we will occasionally use what's called a Broyhill, which is a larger vehicle that automatically picks up all the trash receptacles. The Broyhill we all only use overnight or in the late night hours on the boardwalk. So we don't use it during the peak season or excuse me, during the peak times of day when there's heavy foot traffic on the boardwalk. And again, those vehicles, the Broy Hills, are equipped with what are called balloon tires, which are specifically designed to distribute the weight of the vehicle more evenly on the boards. So are there any alternatives to use smaller vehicles? We use small vehicles. Our main vehicles to use on the boardwalk are small vehicles, gators and ATVs. We, how, only, how? we, we only use larger vehicles when the work requires that we use larger vehicles. How heavy is your uh, uh, smaller vehicles? Uh, the Gators will weigh up to about no more than 3,000 pounds. Um, again, depending on if it's a four person or a two person, does it have, you know, but it, a, a Gator weighs no more than about 3,000 pounds loaded. Okay. Is any of the park's electric, electrical, electric vehicle fee used for boardwalk maintenance? Do you have electric cars used? Yeah, these are all, all of our carts are electric. So all of our all of our gators and small vehicles are electric unless the larger four person gators are diesel because they're not available in batteries. So there's a few vehicles that if you see a four person gator on the boardwalk, it is probably a diesel, but all the rest of our smaller vehicles are electric. Mm. And, and if uh, PEP needs to use a smaller vehicle to transport staff or transport um, someone who is injured, those are all EVs, electric vehicles, like a Nissan Leaf or a Chevy Bolt. Those are all battery operated vehicles. I see. Can you describe the types of maintenance work that is typically performed by city agencies on boardwalks? Who else does work on it? The, the transportation or who? So uh, the majority of maintenance is done by park staff and it's the daily maintenance of picking up trash and litter on the boardwalk, keeping sand off the boardwalk, and then doing regular repairs, as you heard the councilman reference about repairing the wood with our, with our carpenters. Um, that's what you will see most likely occurring on the boardwalk on a daily basis. Occasionally we have to maintain heavier infrastructures again, several times I've mentioned comfort station maintenance, certainly maintenance to the metal rails, which may require one of our welders to go out with welding equipment on the metal rails. So that's the type of maintenance parks does. The other significant maintenance, all lighting, as a uh, chair, you know, all lighting in our parks is maintained by DOT. That's all parks in the agency, in all boroughs. Um, DOT largely maintains their lighting, street lighting and lighting through contractors. So they will have contractors that will use smaller bucket trucks because you obviously need a lift to get up to the heights of the street lighting along the boardwalk. So you may occasionally see bucket trucks that are private vehicles, but they're under contract with DOT to maintain the lighting along the boardwalk. That's what that's about it. It's about us and DOT. Very occasionally you'll have DEP to, to maintain some stormwater infrastructure on or near the boardwalk, but that's very unusual. So does your department uh, attempt to conduct most non-urgent maintenance work on boardwalks during off season or at times when crowd levels are not very high? Well, 
we maintain the boardwalk generally in the off season and in the ramp up season, the season we're in right now, um, because it's difficult at sometimes in the winter with snow and freezing temperatures to maintain the boardwalk, which is why we bring on additional carpenters at this time of year. But then of course, throughout the season, we maintain it. Ideally we work on the shoulder hour. So early in the morning or later in the afternoon, early evening, not in the peak times when people are on the boardwalk unless the conditions absolutely require it. So does your department keep track of tip, uh, keep track of the typical annual cost for boardwalk maintenance and vehicle main maintenance? Uh, if you do, can you give uh, give us the total cost for each of the last three uh, fiscal years? Um, I we we keep track of costs. Yes, um, we can get you those costs. I certainly don't know them off the top of my head. But we, tra we track maintenance costs. I don't know, uh, associated with vehicles, there wouldn't really be much maintenance costs associated with the vehicles, but we'll see if we've had any repairs to vehicles assigned to Coney Island over the last three years. But maintenance costs, we can certainly get you. Okay. So uh, are there any plans to replace the wooden segments of the remaining wooden boardwalks with concrete ones? Um, Chair, that would be a question for our capital projects division, uh, which I am not uh, the deputy commissioner overseeing, so I am not familiar. I, I don't know. Uh, we can certainly get you that information. Uh, so, so what is the current current vehicle uh, weight limit for vehicles operating on boardwalks? I understand you said there's no limit, right? There is no Why state. Not? There's no stated limit. There is, a, there is a practice where we minimize larger vehicles. Again, we use light vehicles. We use gators and ATVs for the majority of work we do, which is again, 3000 pounds plus or minus. Um, but there is no upper weight limit uh, because specifically when it becomes to emergency vehicles, it's FDNY or our, um, needs to get on the boardwalk. For an example, I believe it was two years ago that was that restaurant fire on the Brighton Beach section of the boardwalk um, and FDNY had to get onto the boardwalk and partial to fight that fire and partial to save portions of the boardwalk. Um, so maintenance, you know, that type of emergency vehicles um, can be very heavy, uh, but obviously they, they are only on the boardwalk in the case of emergencies. So there's no um, regul regulation or legislated upper weight limit. So were there any damage after the fire truck went there on the boardwalk, no? Did you go inspect the wooden oh, yes. the boardwalk? We, we definitely inspected the boardwalk and as, as a result of the adjacent fire, absolutely. And there were no significant damage? Not, not as a result of the vehicles, no. Huh. So are there any instances where business on the boardwalk uh, may need access to a vehicle on the boardwalk? I am not aware of any um, instances in the past, but I could envision certainly the, the businesses that front immediately on the boardwalk, if they have to do repair work to their facade or change out light fixtures or, I mean, any kind of maintenance like that, I could envision where there may be a scenario where they would need to have a private contractors access the boardwalk to make repair, repairs to the fronts of the buildings. But that could all that could be and is supposed to be permitted through parks. So that would not be unauthorized uh, private vehicles because it would require a permit and monitoring. For those instances, do they have to apply for a permission from parks to send their vehicles in to they fix do. their they do they ask you for do, yes. permission? They're supposed to. I don't know that they always do, uh, but they're supposed to. I get permission from us to access the, the boardwalk. As I mentioned in my opening statement, uh, the boardwalk, the rules for the boardwalk clearly state that uh, all, per, all unauthorized vehicles are prohibited from the boardwalk. It's in the boardwalk and beach rules and it's posted at every boardwalk entrance. So are those rules published in, uh, uh, on, on notice on, on, the, on the boardwalk or what? Or you hang it on the tree or where, where you put those notice? It's part of the what's called the consolidated rule signs that's posted at the entrance to every park asset. So um, 
every entrance to the beach, there's a consolidated rule, you know, the same set of rules that tell you that no smoking is allowed, et cetera, et cetera. It says no unauthorized, well, it says prohibited dot unauthorized vehicles. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Satori, uh, are there any members who want to ask questions? At this time, no, Chair, there are no additional questions from members. How about uh, Council Member Traeger? Does he have any more additional questions? Uh, I, I'm just, uh, we're, we're, we're going to, we're compiling data on the controller's uh, office as far as the claims. We just know that there, there, there are quite a number of them, uh, which speaks to injuries sustained uh, on the boardwalk. Um, because, Commissioner, I, and again, I, I say this understanding that your agency needs more resources to better maintain the space, but to also say this, that um, we don't have like a hundred million dollar plus conservancy that Central Park has or Prospect Park has. There's a real equity issue here. Um, and I think I'm a big believer that government needs to be the great equalizer in terms of making sure that every neighborhood gets the resources and, and, and respect, quite frankly, that, that it deserves. And Coney Island, you, you had to see the amount of folks you know, coming down, which we welcome. But we need to keep up with the level of maintenance, and that's parks, that's that's, that's a whole other uh, it's sanitation, other agencies. So um, this is going to be a big priority for us in this budget uh, moving forward. But uh, we're, we're going to hammer out language. We're going to work with your, with your team and, of course, our community board about the final language of this bill. But I think with regards to hearing that there's no weight limit, that's incredibly concerning. Um, and I would like to learn more details also about those, those security bollards. Uh, so we'll follow up with you after this hearing as well. Thank, thanks, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. So, Mr. Stotori, maybe we can go on to public testimony. Yes. If there's no other questions from other council members. Thank you, Chair. Yes. Uh, at this time, we'll move on to public testimony. I'd like to remind everyone that unlike our typical council hearings, we will be calling on individuals one by one to testify. As I stated earlier, each panelist will be given three minutes to speak. Please begin once the Sergeant at Arms has given you the cue to begin. Council members who have questions for a particular panelist should use the, use the raise hand function in Zoom and I'll call on you after the panelist has completed their testimony. For panelists, once your name is called, a member of our staff will unmute you and the Sergeant at Arms will give you the go ahead to begin upon setting the timer. So again, please wait for the Sergeant to announce that you may begin for delivering your testimony. At this time, I would like to invite Rob Burstein to testify, who will be followed by Christiana Nelson. Time starts now. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Robert Burstein. I'm the president of the Coney Brighton Boardwalk Alliance for a local community organization with 178 members dedicated to the preservation and enhancement of the boardwalk. Uh, just for some context, I grew up in Coney Island. I currently live in Brighton Beach, and I've run on the boardwalk for decades, so I have an intimate knowledge of the boardwalk. And with all due respect, what I've just heard, there seems to be some minimization of the damage, the incredible damage that's blighted great sections of the boardwalk that uh, I think I'm living in an alternate universe from what I heard from the deputy uh, parks uh, 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 superintendent, if that's his title. Um, there's been a vicious cycle out here for decades where there's been more and more damage and less and less maintenance. And the sole reason that the Coney Island Boardwalk is in such disrepair, the major reason, are the heavy vehicles on the boardwalk largely run by the Parks Department. There's been a, a really exasperating intransigence for years and years on asking them to please use lightweight vehicles. If you We've done our research. We submitted a book to the Design Commission years ago where we called other board, wood boardwalks around the country. No other wood boardwalk runs heavy vehicles. If you look at Long Beach, Ocean, uh, Atlantic City, Wildwood, they limit the, the, the weight of their vehicles to nothing more than the weight of golf carts. In fact, here in New York City, uh, in, in Coney Island, during the summer when they can't run the heavy vehicles through the crowds on the boardwalk, what do they do? They go on the beach or on uh, streets parallel to the boardwalk. So if there's an insistence on very heavyweight vehicles, run them the same way year round. So with that, I would say we support this intro and it, uh, we would hope that it becomes law. However, I would suggest 
removing the words where feasible because from Parks Department's view, it's never feasible. That's a loophole that they'll literally drive a heavy truck through. With that, we respectfully urge you to pass this into law and help stop the destruction of a, an important New York City landmark and preserve our iconic Coney Island boardwalk for our use now and for future generations. I'd be happy to answer any questions if anyone has any. And with that, I thank you kindly for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you for your information. Thank you very much. Our next panelist, our next panelist is Christiana Nelson, who will be followed by Alexandra Silversmith. Time starts now. Okay. Hi, I am Christiana Nelson. Um, I am vice president of the Coney Brighton Boardwalk Alliance, and I'm also just a passionate supporter of um, Coney Island in general and the boardwalk in particular. Um, I live in Park Slope, um, but I visit uh, the boardwalk multiple times throughout the year. In fact, a couple of Fridays ago, I was just there with my two kids and my sister on a really cold day. We went for a walk on the boardwalk and, and had a wonderful time. Um, I just want to register my strong support um, for Councilman Traeger's bill. Um, I really support um, protecting and maintaining this like, iconic landmark. And I think it's important to mention that the Landmarks Commission uh, landmarked a boardwalk, not a sidewalk. Um, so uh, I think it's important to do whatever we can um, to protect it and maintain it. Um, and it seems to me that we can only benefit from a clarity of the rules. There seems to be a lack of um, clarity uh, is what I seem to be gathering um, from what I'm hearing from multiple testimonies in, in this commission. Um, I was involved in the fight to keep the boardwalk from being destroyed and paved over with concrete. Um, and in my time working on this, I, I did a lot of research and was able to speak to officials from other cities who are currently maintaining, uh, successfully maintaining wooden boardwalks. Um, and in fact, one boardwalk that stands out to me is the boardwalk in Ocean City, Maryland, where they actually went from wood to concrete and then back to wood uh, because they found it better economically, aesthetically, practically. And I will mention that they said specifically they had no trash vehicles on that boardwalk. They had um, uh, trash vehicles that would try go on the side um, in the sand and would had arms that would reach up and sort of pick up the um, the trash and uh, tip it into the vehicle. Um, so I guess it just seems to me that there are, are creative solutions out there. And, um, you know, maybe it makes sense to reach out to the city officials in, in Ocean City and, you know, see how they're doing things and what, what we could sort of learn from other communities that are successfully maintaining um, this, these, this treasure in their backyard. Um, and I, I just, again, want to... Um, I want to say that, you know, even though I'm not a resident of Coney Island, um, I, I feel like it's one of the city's treasures. It's it's a uh, it's a place that um, people from all over the world know and come to visit specifically. They, they plan trips to come and visit it. So um, I just I really support uh, working together to do everything we can to to maintain this beautiful landmark. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We also joined by Council Member Levine. Um, Thank you. Uh, our next speaker is Alexandra Silversmith, who will be followed by uh, Koichi Sh uh, Shira Yanagi. Time Good starts afternoon. now. Great. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. I'll be pretty brief, um, but we are, I'm honored to be here. So I'm Alexandra Silversmith. I'm the Executive Director of the Alliance for Coney Island. Um, we're here in support of Councilman Trigger's bill. Um, we were honored to have uh, many of our, our elected officials with us on Friday on the boardwalk um, to hold the opening of Coney Island and the amusement district. So we are here because um, we just want to express support. There have been, unfortunately, in the past, um, and I hope I, I missed the beginning, but I hope this also includes motorcycles and whatnot. We've had a variety of types of vehicles uh, make their way onto the boardwalk and really just want to support creating a pedestrian safe zone for all visitors and for our businesses to be able to thrive in Coney Island and have a safe experience. And so we are just here in support of that and I won't take more of your time than that. So thank you and appreciate the opportunity. 
Thank you. Thank, th <clears throat> thank you. Our next speaker is Koichi Shira Yanaji, who will be followed by Craig Hammerman, Hammerman, who's our last speaker registered for the hearing. Time starts Hi. now. Hi, you, you can hear me. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Koichi Shirayanagi. I'm a resident of Cooney Island. I live on West 15th and, um, and, and Mermaid Avenue, um, just very close to the boardwalk. Um, you know, I moved to this neighborhood uh, because of the boardwalk. I have a three-year-old son and I take him out um, on the boardwalk almost every day. And he's basically learned how to walk. Um, you know, a lot of his uh, early learning how to walk has been on this boardwalk. Um, I uh, support the language. Uh, I mean, I, I support the spirit of the bill, um, but I just wanted to comment on the, on the language. I think uh, it's, it may be difficult to um, enforce um, a weight restriction because what if a vehicle is 2,700 pounds or 2,600 2, pounds? Uh, who is gonna be weighing the vehicle to make sure that uh, it is under 2,800 pounds? I think maybe the language of um, this uh, bill should state specifically what is a vehicle that is too big and that has been used on the boardwalk and what is a vehicle that, you know, um, and, 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 and say that, that, you know, they shouldn't have them and maybe there should be, um, you know, guidance for um, the, the city departments to, um, you know, purchase uh, smaller scale vehicles. I'm, I'd also like to say that, uh, you know, I, I found so many nails, so many, um, uh, uh, boards uh, broken and so many nails popped out of um, their places. Um, but maintenance of the boardwalk is usually, you, you see more maintenance um, in the area of the boardwalk where there's more tourists. And at the end of the boardwalk, like the West End, um, you have an area of the boardwalk where it's now plywood um, on West 20. Uh, fifth to about West 28th Street. It's all plywood and it's been that way for a very long time. It hasn't been uh, maintained um, as, as, as uh, boards there. And there's, you, you see parts of the boardwalk where um, because of non-vehicular um, decay of the boardwalk, you have grass um, growing into the, in the boards. And, and that's a big issue um, as well. So, um, I, you know, I'm limited to three minutes and I only have 20 seconds, but this is the boardwalk is is a treasure for New York City. I, you know, I really um, treasure it. And, um, you know, I, I uh, appreciate you uh, listening to me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And our next and last registered speaker is Craig Hammerman. Time starts now. It's Hammerman, thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Craig Hammerman and I'm here to speak enthusiastically in support of Intro 1888, a bill introduced by Council Member Mark Traeger that would ban the driving of heavy vehicles on boardwalks in New York City. And incidentally, this is actually called the Regalman Boardwalk, not the Coney Island Boardwalk, because it does span Coney Island and Brighton Beach as the Council Member uh, earlier noted. It's really hard to fathom that driving on a boardwalk was legal in the first place. A boardwalk like a sidewalk is intended for use by pedestrians. One would think that's pretty obvious. Apparently it isn't to all drivers. These are the days we're living in, where aggressive driving continues to unabashedly bully its way into becoming normative behavior. We can do better. Boardwalks have been around long before there were vehicles driving on them. The first boardwalk in the United States opened in 1870 in Atlantic City, New Jersey. It wasn't until 1885 that the first gas powered car was invented in Mannheim, Germany. Arguably, no vehicle ever needs to be driven on a boardwalk and any vehicle that does creates a vehicular pedestrian conflict. When have we ever seen a pedestrian emerge victorious in the face of such a conflict? In the interest of public safety, Banning vehicles from the boardwalk is simply the right thing to do. It is the safest option for everyone. 
recognizing that the majority of vehicles driven on the boardwalk belong to the police department or the Department of Parks and Recreation, it is pretty clear to me and others that this legislation will not have the desired effect of removing all vehicular presence from the boardwalk. But it's an important first step because without this law, it would not be illegal to drive on the boardwalk and that must change. The Southern Brooklyn community has made efforts to work with police and parks to bring the number of heavy vehicles down. Parks Department lacks the operational capacity, as we've heard here today, to keep the boardwalk free from the trip hazards that driving on the boardwalk causes. Parks has some motivation because of the extensive damage that driving heavy vehicles does to the boardwalk. As for the police department, we in the community need to do a better job advocating for lighter vehicle equipment, like bicycles, segways, and gators, to give our precinct the right tools they need to effectively patrol the boardwalk. This bill will not completely solve our problem with heavy vehicles driving on the boardwalk. It will still happen even with its passage into law. What it will do, however, is it will establish that driving on the boardwalk is illegal, a practice which, quite incredibly, is not currently illegal. I ask you all to help us take this Time expired. step together toward improving public safety by preserving boardwalks as one of the last pedestrian refuges in the city. We do appreciate your care and support in that regard. And I thank Council Member Traeger for his leadership on this issue and the committee for its consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And at this time, I will turn it back over to Council Member Ku, the chairperson, to offer closing remarks and to adjourn the hearing. Thank you, Chris. Thank you to everyone for attending this hearing today and for your testimony. As Council Member Traeger mentioned earlier, Coney Island and Luna Park are open again. And as the weather gets warmer and vaccinations increase, more and more people will be on the boardwalk and on the beaches. Preserving this landmark structure is important for the history of our city. And also because of the year round open space that it provides for New Yorkers in a dense city. We need to protect the boardwalk. And this legislation is one step closer to preserving it and keep our residents safe. Thank you to my committee staff, Chris, Patrick, Chima, and Monica, and to my own staff for putting this hearing together. And, for, and thank you again to all testify, to all of you who come testify. I will now adjourn this meeting. <laughs>